Oxfam released its regular report, which we always focus because it's so important. It highlights the growing wealth gap. Billionaires added $5 trillion to their wealth since last year's WEF. Peter Goodman is the global economic correspondent uh, for the New York Times. He's the author of Davos Man, How the Billionaires Devoured the World. He joins us now. Peter, it is always good to see you. Um, I, I wish we could be talking at the top of a mountain, excoriating hey. those very Davos men and women apart which you read. Now, Davos Man has been around for a long time. The one thing about Davos Man and the, the Davos gender, they know how to survive. Oh, they know how to thrive. I mean, they have feasted on the calamity of the pandemic, and it's not an accident these findings in this Oxfam report. It's not an accident that the billionaires have added to their wealth while the vast majority of people on earth have seen their fortunes decline. Davos man, I mean, that's a term that goes back to Samuel Huntington's usage to refer not only to the people who go to the World Economic Forum, but the people who are so rich, their wealth so complex, stretching across jurisdictions, that they employ you know, legions of accountants and lobbyists. They essentially write the rules for the rest of us. And those rules, guess what, are written for the perpetuation of Davos man's wealth, often at the expense of societal wealth. And that's exactly what's happened during the pandemic. We've, we've seen the relief programs uh, in many major right. economies used kind of corporate welfare schemes, and the rest of us have suffered. Are you, I, I read the summaries and I saw your comments and this, that and the other, but I, I guess you've known this, Peter. You've covered it for long enough. And unless you're a closet socialist who's determined to put a boot in it and bring the whole thing down, you, you know what they're like. Well, I mean, first of all, I'm not a closet socialist. I'm a very public capitalist. And I mean, I think Part of why I've written this book now, after 10 years of going to Davos and 25 years of writing about economics and, and uh, further than that, if you go back to the dot-com boom, is, you know, it's clear that while we may see through the artifice of Davos, and it may be pretty easy to poke some fun at the hypocrisy of the richest people on earth gathering on a mountaintop under the rubric committed to improving the state of the world, when, of course, they are the <laughs> chief beneficiaries of the status quo. But it's important to understand that their language and their worldview has, in some cases, subtly insinuated itself into the worldview mm -hmm. of all of us and, and the operations of our democracies. Yeah. I mean, True. we may be able to laugh at the idea that we're supposed to feel oneness with Jeff Bezos or Steve Schwartzman or Mark Benioff at a time of a pandemic. I mean, Benioff, uh, the CEO of Salesforce, has famously said that it's, it's a unifying force. We're all, as humans, vulnerable to one pandemic. We can see through that easily and understand that people who are delivering packages, who work in slaughterhouses, people who can't do their jobs on Zoom, they're a lot more right. vulnerable than Benioff, who lives in an oceanfront mansion in Hawaii, to say nothing of just white collar professionals. But, you know, we've accepted, I think, this idea that we either right, get but, the Peter, status quo. Yeah, go right ahead. Do you think, because we're out coming to time, do you think you'll have difficulty getting to talk to these people in the future? Will they look upon you in the future and say, et tu brute, you knifed me? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I think I think somebody who's, who's tr truly committed to improving the state of the world won't take that view <laughs> because... What I'm talking about is transparency in markets and, and making sure that the economies are more sustainable uh, for, for everyone. I mean, ultimately, more people have to prosper and share some of the gains of capitalism, which is a fantastic wealth enhancing system or the whole thing breaks down. Our democracies break down. Nobody believes in anything. You can't right. get people to take vaccines. Peter, we will talk more. I will have you back. Well, you're always welcome. You know that. You're always welcome on Quest Means Business. And when we're up that mountain, we'll also talk then. Thank you, Peter Goodwin of the New York Times. Thank you, Richard.